Tribal Makers! My name is Michal Malev and welcome to my channel. In today's Tuesday combo, we're going to learn a beginner's, beginner's intermediate fusion belly dance combination. It's four sentences, 32 counts, a fun follow along dance tutorial. Come and play with me, learn some new skills, polish your previous ones. And before we begin, as always, make sure you have a glass of water nearby that you're warmed up. And I would like to say a quick thank you to all my viewers and all my subscribers. Thank you, you guys. And if you like this video and if you like my material, don't forget to like it. It will help me reach more audiences. And that's it. Let's start with the practice. For the first eight counts, we're going to relax into our shimmy. So we begin at basic dance posture, feet parallel, hip distance apart. Free the knees, relax them, bend them a little bit. This will give you the option to work with your hips. If your knees are straight, if they're locked, you can't work with your hips. So again, feet parallel, hip distance apart. Free the knees, bend them a little bit. Tilt the pelvis inwards. Now, if you have a big lordosis, and actually I'm on week 20 now and I really start feeling the alignment change happening in my body, I actually need a bigger tilt or even a tuck. So make sure that you're not arching your lower back when you're doing the hip work here. So we're slightly tilting. If you need more than a tilt, you can actually tuck. Long spine activating the core muscle, rolling the shoulders backwards. Let's keep our arms to the side here. And we're going to bend and straighten our knees alternatively. Now I'm going to turn to the side so you can see the action happening here. And we're bending and straightening our knees. Now I try not to lock my knee. I never go to my maximum range of movement, not when I'm straightening my knee and not when I'm bending it. By the way, if at first it feels weird to bend your knee and to be low like this, it's okay with with time and with practice, the muscles get used to this crazy positioning thing. So we bend and straighten our knees alternatively here, and we slowly start to pick up the pace. We go faster and faster, and the faster we go, the smaller the movement becomes. And also, it goes up into your hips, from the knees into your hips, and this is why it's so important to make sure that the knees are free and that you're slightly bending your knees. Let's go back into center. And I would like you again to bend and straighten your knees. Make sure that you've started with a little tilt in your pelvis or even a tuck if needed and long spine. We bend and straighten, we slowly pick up the pace and we're shimmying. Now we'd like you to focus your energy to your heels. This way you're grounding yourself and the shimmy becomes earthier if you're feeling it. Just push your heels while you're bending and straightening your knees and see how this whole thing reacts inside your body, how the legs react to it, the hips react to this activation with your heels. Take your weight a little bit backwards as well. This will really help you to focus the action on your hips. Beautiful. Now, in this choreography, we're going to open our arms to the side. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I like when we have a little bit of space in the elbow, but you can also do it in a straight line. And if you prefer, you can have this triangle going on. You can have your finger pointing the floor. I would rather let the finger point to the floor when we're talking about stylization for this one, but to do whatever feels comfortable for you, whatever looks good with your body. So again, we'll start with our shimmy and we have five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing to the other side. So we cross. If we crossed here, now we're crossing here. We're shimming and we have another five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Make sure that when you're working with your arms, especially if it's relatively a simple movement, that there is a lot of strength in your fingers and the fingernails even, there's tension, intentional tension in your arms. So if I'm having floppy fingers, floppy hands, and we're shimming, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is okay, but it's not magical. On the other hand, the moment I have tension in my fingers, in the palm of my hand, in my arm, there's a lot of energy happening here. And then we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a lot of energy here and it, the movement becomes magical and powerful. So don't forget to breathe while you're shimming, focusing your energy to the earth, make it an earthy head, earthy shimmy, and strong hands, strong fingers, strong arms. Let's continue. On the next eight counts, we're going to layer four florios, 
with two mayas. So we have another five, six, seven, eight. We'll start with breaking down the mayas. We're starting with a basic dance posture, feet parallel to each other, hip distance apart, freedom in the knees, pelvis tucked in, activating core muscles, long spine, shoulders backwards, and let's take our arms to the side. From here, we're going to bend and straighten one leg and one knee. So one knee is bending, we'll start with bending this one, and the other one is straightening up, and we're lifting our hip up as well. Since this is the beginner's version, I will also allow you to lift your heel a little bit. So if we're looking from the side, I'm bending this leg and I'm lifting this hip up. From here, in a diagonal line, I'm trying to keep my hip as high as I possibly can and take it as far as I possibly can as well to the side. It will go down eventually because there is only a limit to the range of movement that we have here. And when I reach the maximum, when I'm feeling that this is enough, I can't go any further, I'm going downwards, bending my knee here a little bit, putting the heel down and taking my hip back to center. We lifted our hip up, lifted the heel up, taking it further to the side as we can. The further, the better. If this is a bit much, you don't have to go to your maximum range of movement. You can always make it smaller, especially, by the way, to my pregnant ladies out there, um, our body becomes more flexible. Our joints become more flexible, our ligaments, everything becomes more flexible. So make sure that you're not overly stretching things. And if this is a new range of movement for you, don't come to your maximum range. Always give yourself a little bit of a slack here. So from here, we're taking our hip, taking it to the maximum that we can at the moment, maybe less, taking it down, putting the heel down, and going back to center. Same thing to the other side. So we'll bend this knee, straightening this leg, lifting the heel up, the heel, heel goes up, the hip goes up, and we're taking our hip to the side and down and back to center. And this way, we're drawing a circle to both sides with our hip, and we're creating the figure eight with our hips. Now, we're going to start focusing on the upper part of the body, trying to isolate it. The movement is only in our hips. The abdominal area, of course, reacts to it. By the way, another way to imagine it is picture that you're riding bicycles and the road is a little bit bumpy and you're riding bikes and the hip goes from one side to the other, but the upper part of the body really try to balance everything out. So you're slightly leaning forward here and then slowly start elongating your spine, elongating the back of your neck. Beautiful, take your arms to the side and you're doing the Maya. Now, if you're feeling comfortable with the Maya and you have enough range of movement in your muscles here, you can keep your knees, knees. you can keep your heels down, glued to the floor and do it without lifting your heels. This is the more advanced version, but since this is a beginner's tutorial, um, you can definitely lift your heel up. And with time and with practice, the body will understand what it needs. The muscles that need a little bit more length will get this length, and then you can keep your heels on the floor. So for the first eight counts, we're doing two miles, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on top of our mayas, we're going to add floreos on top of it. So we're having four floreos on our two mayas here. We're going to basically lift our arms up to shoulder height while we're using a floreo. Now a floreo is a movement that is focused on the wrist. The wrist initiating the whole movement, it leads the whole movement. So play with your wrist circle here and make sure that the elbow remains as neutral as possible, as well as keeping lots of energy in your fingers, because again, doing it with no energy in your fingers can work if you want this kind of stylization, this very relaxed, nonchalant um, stylization. But if you want it to be a little bit more powerful, add some intentional tension into your fingertips and into the palm of your hand. So play with it, work with it. Don't forget to stretch your hands a little bit before and after and relax. So let's do it. We are going just to do the floreo now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Now let's add our mayas to the floral. And I want to mention it that if for some kind of reason you'll notice that when you're taking the floral inwards, your hip goes inwards as well, it makes complete sense. We're actually doing something that is a little bit counterintuitive because it's easier to go into the takasim here instead of the maya because we're starting with up instead of going down. But this is the way that we practice our mind. This is how we get better. When we try to do all kinds of tricky things that don't come natural for us as well, this is how we create new connections in our brains. So this is great brain exercise for us. So let's say we finished our shimmies and five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. And that's it. That's the second phrase. So let's do both phrases on both sides. We'll start with five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful, same thing to the other side. So we'll start with this hand on top. And from five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful, let's continue. On the third phrase, we'll begin with one floret on the count of one. Lifting one arm up, the other arm will go down and the foot is going to point in a diagonal to the side in a tandu here, base leg is bent. And from here, we're going to turn on the count of five, six, seven, eight. This will be an inward axis turn. So let's do the whole thing. We start just with the arms. So the most basic version will be lifting our arms up after the floreo. So we have one, two, three, four. Again, strong arms, strong fingers. From here, if you're not feeling comfortable turning, adding any kind of variation, you simply take your arms down on the count of five, six, seven, eight. So one arm goes down, the other one comes and meet it halfway in the middle here in front of our chest. So again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing to the other side. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Now let's add the leg actions in here. So when we're starting lifting our arms up on the count of one, we're stretching one arm up. The opposite leg is going to be pointing its tundu to the side. So we're creating this diagonal with our leg here. We're pointing down, we're on our toe here. The weight is on the base leg here and the knee is bent. And this is important for any turn we would like to do next. Now you can either slowly close your leg here if you want to, if you're not feeling like you want to turn. The more intermediate level will be adding a cross turn. So we're taking on the five, six, seven, eight, this leg, crossing it to the front and turning five, six, seven, eight. Let's do it from the side. I'm taking one leg, crossing it in front of the other, making sure that the base leg is bent. And I'm trying to take my foot further back. The further I go, the less energy I need to invest in the turn. So make sure that the base leg is bent because this is our, our axis in the, in the cross turn. And from here, you're going to turn and you're facing back the audience. So you're facing front again. So from here, let's say, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're here again. Good. Now we're going to do the more advanced version and we're going to make it into an inward axis turn. In inward axis turn, I use the momentum from both of my legs to turn. So I'm using the momentum here to turn and do it in one go. For those of us who are not used to turning and spinning, make sure that the surface you're practicing on is stable. And if you are on your second trimester or third trimester and you haven't spent or turned or you're not used to doing all those kind of work with your legs, please don't start doing them now. There are beautiful alternatives to turns and spins. You can try to do the cross turn, but again, only if you're feeling stable enough. And when we're doing exercises or steps that challenge our balance, 
when we're pregnant, that can actually lead to, to a fall or to an injury. You don't have to do it at this moment. This is for more advanced dancers. Let's do the arm and the leg. It's beautiful by itself. You don't have to push yourself at this point in your pregnancy. So we're going to do the axis turn. We're going to bend one leg and we're going to go in a tendu, we're going in a diagonal here with the other leg. And from here, we're going to straighten the base leg when we're getting into the turn. This way, we're creating a strong line here that we're going to turn around this. This is our axis. And we're going to use the momentum from our leg here to push us into a turn. So I'm basically swaying myself into a turn here. There's a lot of going on in here, so make sure you're feeling comfortable. Make sure you won't hit yourself in the sofa. And remind yourself that new skills takes time. So if you can't make it on your first go, try it again and again and again. Trust me, with time and with practice, you'll get there. So again, we're bending one leg. The other one is in a diagonal to the side here. And we're going to use the momentum here. So we have one arm up, one arm down. We're going to use the momentum here to create a turn. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm taking one arm down and the other one goes up and meets in the middle. So let's do the same thing to the other side. From here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I forget to flip this arm all the time, <laughs> but it's okay. This is why we're practicing. So let's try to do the whole sentence from the beginning. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. Same thing to the other side. We have from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, you can either do the cross turn version or, the, or just doing your arms, whatever feels comfortable. So let's do the three phrases on both sides. We have five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it, same thing to the other side and five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. If you're lost your balance a little bit like me, just practice, practice, practice. And let's continue to the next phrase. On the next eight counts, we'll relax again into our shimmy, and we're going to create a circle with both of our arms. So one hand is going up, the other one is going down. And on five, six, seven, eight, we close the circle. Same thing to the other side. We have five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're crossing and we're prepping ourselves to start the whole combination to the other side. So let's do the whole combo on both sides. We'll start with chiming and we have five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other side, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great job, everyone. Now let's play with the music. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
six, other side. One, two, three, four, five. Other side, she breathe, relax, and enjoy it. Miles with the rails. And toes turn. Stabilize yourself, she Breathe. Other side, one, two, three, four. Forget to flirt. One. Turn. Chin. Down. Breathe. And Maya. Turn. Pose. Great job, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the practice. If you did, give me a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Join the tribe. I upload new Tuesday combos every Tuesday, so you are more than welcome to check out the previous tutorials, mix and match combinations, create your own dances with them. And that's it. I'll see you on our next video. And remember, life is too short. Enjoy it. Bye.